All paths led to this. The chance meeting in the hospital parking lot, the mysterious disappearance from a congested filling station, and subverting a national threat and predatory being from indiscriminately applying more harm. All paths led to this. Had the police department or Emily had Miriam's unique ability to mentally move and project her being, had they been able to shimmer and see beyond the things others could not see, either or both of them could have been light years closer to determining where the boys were hiding. The GPS's coordinates brought both Miriam and her protector to the entrance of a bustling hot spot for ice cream. How fitting. Mr. Birch was a silver-tongued predator who, under normal circumstances, was skilled at charming children. He thrived on making youngsters feel their maximum level of comfort prior to overpowering him or her. Yet he failed miserably when he delivered Chase and Chan, his greatest trophies to date, safely to their favorite place unharmed. <laughs> Miriam chuckled. She was elated by their genius and fearlessness. She imagined how many times over her powers would be amplified by those magnificent beings. My dear friend, I feel it. We are closer. We are close to locating our great and powerful future allies. We will use every trick and every tactic to uncover the essence of their being. We will find the inconsequential items often overlooked by the men and women who patronize this restaurant and who worked here when the boys were here. We will uncover any suppressed and guarded memory. We will locate those boys. Miriam and her protector entered the ice cream shop as patrons and blended in seamlessly. They walked about and listened to every conversation and they casually inserted themselves when they could. After hour upon hour in the restaurant, they had consumed nearly every possible combination of ice cream the shop had to offer. There was a period when, for both Miriam and her protector, they dreaded lifting a plastic spoon or flavored waffle cone to their lips. The elegant and decadent flavors began to taste less pleasurable and more like a punishment. They soldiered on anyway. Many of the patients were simply passing through. It was a beautiful summer's day and the web had great reviews for this particular ice cream establishment. Those individuals who were not fixtures were gradually eliminated from the list of reasonable sources for information. Finally, Emily's protector, who had taken the form of a middle-aged male store patron, found an elderly couple who he believed held the key to locating the boys. They had name tags on as if they were previously at an event. Based on their age and clothing selection, it was not a formal event. Looking even more closely, Miriam suspected that Mrs. Lawrence was taking her husband, Mr. Lawrence, on an ice cream date, perhaps as a nice change of pace from his days in a senior's care home. Hi, Mrs. Lawrence. This place is so crowded and these two seats at your table seem to be open. Do you mind if we join you? <laughs> Not at all. Thank you, Mrs. Lawrence. It's my pleasure to introduce you to my friend Miriam. She and I were taking a break from the road and decided to stop here. This place is quite unique. The web boasts about the ice cream flavors and ambiance, and rightfully so. It really does the restaurant no justice in describing the diversity of patrons and the deliciousness of its ice cream. As I look around, I see business and working class. There have been at least three or four of every ethnicity entering and leaving this place. I've seen super fit, I've seen not so fit, not to mention every age range from toddler to well, <laughs> you guys. Miriam smiled and the couple smiled too. Mrs. Lawrence responded with a background and introduction on herself. We've been coming here, no matter the weather, for years now. My Mitchell especially likes it. In recent years, he forgets quite a bit. Being here brings him spurts of recollection. Seeing that gives me energy and hope. Mrs. Lawrence smiled lovingly at Mr. Lawrence, who vacillated between being present and away while docilely enjoying his ice cream. So where are you two young people headed? Well, we don't know exactly, but my partner tells me that he believes that your Mitchell can help. In turn, for his help and your help, I'll help him. It'll be a mutually beneficial exchange. Mrs. Lawrence had a slightly puzzled look on her face. She smiled awkwardly, mostly out of Southern hospitality. 
Mitchell, Mitchell, listen to me. I believe you were here when two beautiful red-headed boys came here. I need to find them. The staff doesn't remember, and other recurring patriots don't recall it, but I know that you do. This undesirable condition that is befalling you will trouble you no longer if you help me. Mr. Lawrence never raised his head from looking at his ice cream. As Miriam spoke, he had three to four tiny scoops of the deliciously creamy treat. After three or four bites, Mitchell looked up at his wife and told her that he loved her. He mentioned something about his life, his wife, and their children. Then before he looked down at his ice cream, he gave Mrs. Lawrence a peck on the cheek. Mrs. Lawrence blushed. This place brings them back to me. These moments, they sustain me. Young people equate love to just the physical touch. They worry about money. They expect that every day must be good or they'll pull chalks. It hurts when he looks at me and he doesn't recognize me. I can feel my heart tear into two. <sighs> Mrs. Lawrence breathed deeply. She looked down to collect herself and then looked up and smiled. I'm thankful for meeting you two. All my friends are dead and so are my parents. They've been gone for a while. All I have is Mitch and our ice cream. It's helpful to speak to a stranger and unload this baggage, even if it's just for five minutes, so that I can get back to focusing on what's important, which is being there for Mitch. There is an action part in love. There is more than love. There is being there, that part. Mr. Lawrence looked up at Miriam and a light came on. My gosh, I thought I dreamed it. You had that glow. I seen it as a child. You're a witch. Mr. Lawrence looked away from Miriam and peered through the window as if he heard his name called. I'm an old woman, but I am far from naive. I'm also a registered gun owner and have a license to carry. And she's in my purse right now. What do you want? Be straightforward. Miriam did not respond to Mrs. Lawrence. Instead, she looked over to Mitchell. She grabbed his wrist and then his hand. Mitchell, think back. Show me the two redhead boys. They were here. I need to find them. Where are they now? The memory came flooding back from Mitch, and it was clearly relayed onto Miriam. Miriam saw the twins leave with a man and a boy, father and son. She then used her ability to see the receipt the man signed for his ice cream, as well as the vehicle he drove away in. Mitchell, thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Your condition has brought opportunity for me, and a very unique opportunity for you. It's okay for you to come back. With that, Miriam and her protector stood up and left. Mitchell looked over to Mrs. Lawrence. Mrs. Lawrence had her Mitchell back. Miriam got back to some old-fashioned detective work and quickly found the man, Lewis, and his son, Sam, who left with the twins from the ice cream shop. They lived in a quaint house. Lewis was a kind and loving man. Sam was an equally kind and loving but rambunctious and talkative boy. Neither remembered a thing. Help came in an unlikely ally. During Miriam's and her protector's interview, Mrs. Lewis came home. Lewis had reconciled with his estranged wife. She was the vessel that provided the final clue. She had missed her visitation due to a date that had gone wrong. When she arrived the next day, she asked Lewis and her son Sam what they had done and where they had been. Neither Lewis nor Sam had a reasonable explanation. It was as if both were coached and were hiding something. She felt jealous and left out. She had thrown her marriage away, but suddenly realized what she had in her husband. She had to know if there was someone else in Lewis's life. What she found were receipts. There were receipts for food and for gas. The receipts read Denton, Texas. <laughs>